Good morning to everyone. I'm uh, Domenico Ribezzo from Florence, uh, exactly from the Italian National Institute of Optics, a section of the CNR, and from the University of Naples, Federico II. I will talk about the quantum network that we realized uh, last summer, uh, putting in uh, connections uh, three European countries, uh, Italy, Slovenia, and Croatia. So uh, after a little introduction about uh, quantum key distribution, uh, quantum networks, and about this, this, job, this job, I will uh, explain the architecture of the network and set up that we uh, used. Uh, then uh, after uh, telling something about uh, the parameters that we used, uh, I will show you the results. I will talk a bit about the post-processing methods implemented, and uh, then I will conclude. So, uh, quantum K distribution was invented in 1984 by Bennett and Russell, and uh, um, is a method that makes two parts, generally known as Alice and Bob, able to exchange a key that then they would use for uh, encrypting their uh, private communications. Uh, the peculiarity of this method is that the key that they exchange is 100% uh, safe, and this is uh, guaranteed by quantum mechanics laws. Quantum mechanics laws. Uh, nowadays, many steps have been made after uh, this protocol, so many new, more innovative protocols, uh, and many experiments have been made both in the laboratories and the trials. Uh, quantum networks are already established in the world. There are already companies selling uh, commercial QKD devices and uh, different infrastructures. For example, what you see in this picture is uh, an experiment made in 19, uh, sorry, made in 2018, in uh, 2018, uh, where a quantum network was established between uh, China and uh, Austria and uh, the key was used to encrypt the video call. It was, uh, it was made uh, using satellites. Then other important quantum networks, uh, famous quantum networks today are the quantum networks going uh, all around the city of Cambridge. And uh, the, most, uh, the most advanced one at the moment, the Chinese quantum network connecting uh, all the many important uh, Chinese uh, cities from Shanghai to Beijing, uh, uh, running for uh, uh, 4,600 kilometers, and every city is also, every node, so it's also other nodes, so it's, it's uh, pretty advanced. What we did in this job was um, making for the first time a quantum network connecting three uh, countries in Europe. So this was also the first step towards the European quantum network. Uh, so there is this project called the EuroQCI, European Quantum Communication Infrastructure, that aims to realize a, a quantum network in the uh, European Union within uh, 2027. Uh, so this was the, fir the first uh, practical step. And then uh, we used this uh, quantum network to, uh, to do QKD, and, to, uh, and this key was used to encrypt a video call at the G20 Digital Ministers meeting held in Trieste last uh, August uh, 2021. Uh, the, um, the network was used to broadcast, to stream uh, two music, classical music concerts from the conservatories of Ljubljana and Zagreb uh, in the G20 meeting room. So in the map, you can see the, the position of the network and also that there were four nodes. Uh, not all the, of these nodes were uh, final users uh, because the post in our node acted just as a trusted node. So the final users were uh, Trieste, Ljubljana, and Rijeka. The network was uh, made by two fibers, one uh, used for the quantum signals and the other used for uh, services signals, so it's using synchronization uh, uh, parameters, estimations. Uh, there was the first transmitter in Trieste in the in the meeting room, and uh, the signal from here were going to a telecom center close to there in Trieste, uh, where uh, there was a, a switch. The switch was at the, the purpose of split the signal and uh, route uh, the this 
new two signals toward the the Ost sorry to, toward the Slovenian border in uh, one side and uh, so until the Postoina and on the other side uh, towards Croatia so until the Dieka. Uh, Postoina had another receiver, so this was, this was the first receiver for Trieste, and then another receiver for, from, for, to receive the states from Ljubljana and uh, to create this second quantum key. In the end, these two quantum, these two quantum key uh, were used to put in communication Trieste with Ljubljana. So the protocol that we used is a variation of BB84. Um, and uh, it was uh, time being encoded. It means that uh, the state, the qubit, is a, is a time slot, and uh, um, the, the state is made by a pulse, by a photon that can have an R in the first half, and we will call it, we will talk of early state, and we can encode it as a zero, or in the second half, in another position, let's say, and it is a late, so one. Uh, this in the computational basis. Uh, when you go to the other neutral unbiased base, basis, uh, so the Kiavanan one, uh, we have that uh, the, the states have to be the quantum superposition of the, the two states in the Z basis. So there are the wave function is made by both of the pulses, and the state is distinguished uh, by looking at the relative phase between these two states. Uh, I said that uh, this is a variation. Indeed, uh, we didn't produce like the two possible phases are zero and pi, uh, but we didn't produce the pi phase state because uh, um, this protocol is, is an efficient version of BBT4, so it's uh, it's uh, it makes the setup easier. Let's say. Also, uh, this makes that uh, the X basis cannot be used for exchange with the key, but just for security check, because it, it doesn't have the same state. Uh, finally, since we didn't have um, a real single photon source, uh, but uh, we could use weak coherent pulses, um, we implemented the D1 decoy method. Uh, the decoy method was invented in 2004, uh, to solve the problem that uh, when you use uh, weak coherent pulses and you produce more than one photon in uh, your state, if you could uh, take this photon and uh, not be detected uh, because she, uh, she let pass the other the other the other uh, the other photons. Uh, in the decoy method, you have to change the transmission intensity level randomly. So if I cannot know where. Uh, when you send it more, when you send it less. So uh, if she uh, detects photons, she cannot keep the error rate constant, so she can be detected. So uh, the key length in this protocol is uh, bounded to uh, the lower bound of the vacuum events plus the, the lower bounds of the single photon events. Uh, of course, the multi photon events cannot be. And then you have to subtract the single photon events times the binary entropy of the phase error rate. That is basically uh, what you have to discard for the private simplification step, then in post processing. Then you have to remove also the, the number of bits disclosed during the error correction stage. And the last two terms are uh, related to uh, the secrecy parameter and correctness parameters, that are uh, two parameters that. Uh, you have to set and they have to be really low because of the probability that in the first case the Alice and the Eve's keys are more correlated than the Alice and the Eve's keys. And then the second, the, the, uh, the correctness parameters is uh, related to the probability that uh, the Alice and Bob keys are the same. So the error correction works well. So uh, the setup of Alice, uh, we had a C-band uh, continuum wave laser that was uh, splitted and one portion was going towards a first intensity modulator that was uh, driven by a field programmable gate array and uh, was uh, the modulator that uh, by carving this continuum wave laser was producing the pulses uh, encoding the states. After that, there was a uh, some optical attenuation variable 
uh, so we could uh, we could select the uh, exercise intensity at the level that we needed, and uh, the signal after that was injected into the control channel. The other part of the laser was going to a second intensity modulator that was still driven by this FPGA, but uh, with a different signal. So it was producing a signal, a synchronization signal of 145 megahertz, and was this signal was uh, a classical one going to the other channel for. Uh, and was necessary. It was necessary for Bob to correct the the, the, uh, the repetition rate of the quantum signal is uh, 595 megahertz, and uh, the pulses uh, can uh, uh, can be uh, separated of 800 picoseconds. Uh, we didn't implement a quantum random number generator, so uh, the the um, the, 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 the states are uh, uh, generating according to a preloaded sequence into the FPGA of a length uh, 4095 bits. Uh, it should be noticed that even if uh, the, this is a repeated sequence, uh, since the losses uh, happen randomly and many photons are losses, the final, uh, the final uh, state cannot be known in advance. The final, I'm sorry, the final key cannot be known in advance. The uh, but not even the row. The probability of choosing the uh, for Alice so in the sequence was ninety percent. This is the Bob setup. Uh, so the quantum, like the states in the quantum channels, are immediately split in two. Uh, half are going towards a first single photon detector, a now launching a single photon detector that uh, is there to. Uh, to detect the arrival time of the photons. And the other half is going towards a delay line interferometer. Uh, this uh, delay line interferometer uh, is necessary for uh, detecting the phase. And uh, even if they are in the, in the different links, we use the different kind of interferometer, basically Max Ender and uh, Michelson. Uh, the purpose of all of them is to have uh, one uh, path, one optical path delayed uh, with respect to the other of 800 picoseconds. So uh, the two pulses in the X basis can overlap and uh, looking at, at the output of the interferometer, we can check uh, the relative phase between the two pulses. Also, there was a phase lock loop that uh, uh, was the, was necessary for uh, locking the interferometer on a certain phase, and was made by a monitoring laser and injecting uh, using a density wavelength division multiplexing, and then uh, looking monitoring the phase fluctuations of this laser. Uh, we could control with the PID uh, sh a phase shifter that uh, kept the interferometer on a certain phase. Finally, the service channel, so the synchronization signal was read, read by a uh, detector, and all of these uh, signals uh, are sent to a time digit converter in order to produce the timestamps that then we will use to extract the key. So yeah, uh, the the basis choice is 50-50 for Bob, um, and uh, yeah, also since we, as I said, we have different kind of interferometer, uh, we have different losses, and uh, we um, use the best interferometer, the left loss loss interferometer in the in the link showing more dimension. The single photon detector showed around 2,500 2, dark hands per second and were set to 20 microseconds of hold of time and 20% uh, of quantum efficiency. So this is uh, the architecture of the network. So the black uh, boxes are, uh, are the computers in the, in the meeting rooms and uh, they act as uh, both application layer and uh, um, and the logical classical uh, logical layer so it, it works like it works like this when someone wants to open the vpn uh, so to put in communication the nodes uh, the computer uh, ask a request of the key to the key management layer the orange boxes that uh, if uh, has already some key stores sent to the, sent to the 
logical to classical logical layers. Otherwise, send the request to the quantum layer to produce something. The quantum layer is uh, made by both all the optical and all the optical setup and all the setup, and that is the quantum physical layer, and uh, by all the algorithms and the post processing methods necessary to finally extract the key that is the logical, the quantum logical layer. So uh, we can see that uh, the, the Trieste Postonian and Ljubljana Postonian link showed similar attenuation of 14 dB, but the Trieste Rieka link uh, had a much larger attenuation, 25 dB. Uh, then uh, the mu are the number of photon repulses, so for the decoy signal, and they have been set according to a simulation model in order to maximize the key rate. We see that uh, Trieste Boston and Trieste Rieka has the same move uh, because the, that is a comp uh, move of compromise uh, since uh, the, in Trieste there was just one, uh, one uh, transmitter, so uh, it, it couldn't be different. The block size is around uh, 10 to the 6. For this trick, it's a bit more, 6 times 10 to the 6. And uh, the acquisition time of one block size is uh, one or two minutes in uh, the short links and half an hour for uh, the link uh, with more uh, attenuation. Finally, I just want to show you that the Kuber is, is pretty low uh, for both of them in Z, also for TSTRK. The interesting thing is that uh, the Kubari mix uh, in, for the TSTRK is uh, the, the smaller one, even if it's the worst thing. And this is because uh, we put uh, a neutral loss free space interferometer in that, uh, in that link uh, that shows just 1.5 dB of attenuation. So this made uh, the thing possible. Finally, we use also adaptive uh, temporal filters. So like uh, we, uh, we decrease the filter. Uh, I mean, we, we use filters in order to maximize the key rate. So for the link where the dark counts had more uh, weight, we use the smart filter. We got a key rate uh, of uh, 3,100 for Ljubljana Postojna and more than 2,000. 2080 for bit per second for Trieste Postonia link and uh, over 600 bit per second the Trieste Rica link. Uh, and we also got a seven hour uh, uh, long term stability measurement on the Trieste Postonia link. So, like you can see here in the bottom, uh, this each point is a block size, so 130 seconds of uh, data. And uh, you can see that except in a few cases where uh, the key dropped to zero or close to zero, uh, because uh, basically uh, there were some, uh, um, some uh, environmental uh, disturbance that the face lock group was not able to compensate. But in general, after that, the, the value went, uh, went uh, also went again up. And uh, it was stable, uh, pretty stable uh, um, for all the seven hours of the future. So, uh, after the acquisition of the raw key, there are some uh, post processing uh, stages that have to be done. So, it's the, the, the sifting of the key, that means uh, throwing away the cases where uh, APES that Alice and Bob don't use the same uh, basis to read. Um, then the error correction that uh, it, that like uh, they have to do in order to have a uh, key that are uh, the same that matches. Then the error verification that uh, is necessary to verify that the error correction works, and then the price amplification. An important thing is that uh, we choose the block size uh, such that uh, the computational time necessary for the post processing didn't act as a bottleneck. So uh, the block size is, uh, was limited by this thing that uh, is important you have to do live cooking. Uh, also, it's limited to the computational power of the computer materials. So uh, the error corrections was made with the cascade protocol uh, invented by Brassard. So like uh, we split the key into blocks of uh, length 0 0.73 over Kuber. 
and uh, we used the binary search to look for errors. Um, we uh, repeated like after the after the first uh, step, we repeated with blocks that are the double, etc. This for eight iterations. We didn't do uh, the way back uh, uh, procedure of the cascade uh, to correct to cor correct for the errors because uh, it uh, was uh, making the code really slow. And we compensated for this uh, doing more iterations. So uh, it uh, this uh, uh, means that the error reconciliation efficiency was a bit higher than the than the best, but still uh, pretty okay. And uh, this parameter is uh, is to be read as is, is defined as uh, as written here, and it has to be read as uh, one is the perfect error correction, uh, ideal error correction that doesn't lose anything, and uh, the higher the number is, more, the higher with respect to one the number is, uh, the worse uh, uh, efficiency is the error correction. And uh, we had, uh, in any case, uh, error correction efficiency that went to from 1.25 to 1.28. Then, uh, after the error verification, um, there, there was the uh, private certification that is basically using an hash function to uh, make the key shorter in order to reduce the correlation between uh, uh, some key that uh, Eve would have uh, got and the uh, key of Alice and Bob. So Alice generates a bit string that uh, is long enough to create a matrix that is L times NZ, where L is the final key that you want, that you want to obtain, uh, considering the theoretical bound that uh, I showed before, and NZ is the block size. And then Eve uses this key uh, to obtain the final key, uh, just making a, a dot product, so the shifted key dot uh, this matrix. Uh, an interesting thing of our algorithm is that uh, uh, it, 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 it was efficient because the matrix was not built all at once and the, the code was parallelized, so it was pretty fast. In the end, the key was split into 2048 bits blocks and was used to encrypt uh, a VPN. Uh, and the key was uh, changed uh, uh, often. So, to conclude, we established a quantum network uh, properly working in a few days. And uh, we used uh, this quantum network to give a demonstration of, uh, to do a PoKD experiment and to give a demonstration of PoKD, not just uh, to a scientific uh, audience, but to a political audience in an important international event. And uh, this was the first step towards uh, Europe OCI, so towards uh, a European quantum network. Uh, it it was uh, it it was not easy because also uh, uh, we, we had to put together different telecom companies, different uh, European partners, and uh, and uh, there were many engineeristic uh, uh, engineeristic uh, things to to solve. Uh, as I pointed out already, each node was connected to everyone else because uh, it, it doesn't work that just they were connected to the following one, but in this in, in a quantum network, each node is uh, connected with everyone else by a unique key, even without the quantum random number generation. But uh, in a future for future improvements, we should uh, add the quantum random, random number generation, and uh, we should uh, do the phase randomization that was not made since we were starting, we were carving the states from the same continuum web base. So uh, these are all the people that made this possible. Uh, you, you can see that there are a lot of institutions involved, LCNR, uh, but also DTU, the Danish Technical University, the Italian company QTI, uh, the Croatian uh, Bolshevik uh, Institute, uh, the University of Zagreb, the University of Ljubljana, University of Trieste, and, uh, and a lot of people involved. So uh, thank you for the attention, and uh, I look forward for uh, receiving uh, questions and uh, comments from you.